In 2005, I was in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina had devastated the Gulf Coast. It was a very, very tragic time to be there. People had lost their loved ones. They lost their communities. They were trying to get home, and some of them didn't have homes to go to. Just being there, as you can imagine, impacted me significantly. It was a very sad time. And one of the ways in which it impacted me is it got me thinking about our environment, and I saw firsthand how our environment is crucial for our very survival. And I started wondering, what am I doing to our environment? How am I treating it? And it got me thinking about things like my carbon footprint. And what am I doing with waste? Am I throwing waste into the environment and not being cognizant of that? So the products that I use, many of them are made from petroleum. And when they're manufactured, CO2 is dumped into the atmosphere to make those products. Many of the products that I make end up in landfills, where more carbon waste is dumped into the atmosphere in the form of methane. And some of my waste may end up even polluting our waterways. There's, in fact, an island of trash in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, an island that some have estimated is twice the size of the continental U.S. This is bad. And if you take my carbon waste and you multiply it by seven billion people on this planet and counting, what kind of planet are we leaving for future generations? So at some point, I decided to stop thinking about the problem because that's quite depressing, and I started to think about solutions. We've got to clean up our waste. How can we do it? How can I not only clean up my waste, but develop something that have, could have large-scale impact? But there's hope. And as a scientist, I know that there's hope in nature, because in nature, there is no carbon waste. There's just the carbon cycle. In nature, carbon dioxide is emitted and captured and emitted and captured all the time. It's a natural part of the photosynthetic process. But the problem is, we are emitting CO2 and dumping carbon waste into our atmosphere at a rate that's too fast for nature to handle. So one can ask the question, are there ecosystems within nature where perhaps the carbon cycle is sped up? And you can actually recycle CO2 faster than you can with the normal cycle. And this led me and others to look at some of nature's natural chemical refineries, microorganisms, single-celled organisms, your yeast, your algae, your bacteria, that actually are natural chemical refineries in nature. They break down matter and they build up matter from carbon dioxide all the time. And there are, in fact, trillions upon trillions of these. And they're all over the Earth, above and below the surface of the Earth. And in fact, there's over 10,000 different types of microbes in our bodies that are doing wonderful things. Many of them, they're crucial for our immune system. And although you may not be as excited about microbes as I am, they're quite fascinating things, I guarantee you that you are excited about some of microbes, the products that microbes make. If you enjoy a glass of Pinot Noir on a Friday night after work to wind down after a long work week, then you are enjoying a product of microbes. If you enjoy beer or cheese or yogurt, these are all products of microbes. Even the medicines that we take come from microorganisms. So back to the CO2 problem. Can we find microbes that are able to speed up this carbon recycling process and help us with our carbon waste? Interestingly enough, NASA asked this very question in the context of thinking of long-term space travel. Can you use microbes in order to recycle CO2 aboard spacecraft? And the answer was yes. And they studied a class of microbes called null gas microbes that actually can do this. Kind of amazing. And some of these null gas microbes can be found in extreme environments on our, our planet, like places where there's hydrothermal vents and geothermal vents. And it would seem like these are toxic environments because there's a lot of dissolved carbon dioxide, dissolved methane in these environments. In some places, there is no sunlight, so there's lack of photosynthesis. But these are crucial parts of nature where these microbes, some of them are called extremophiles, are actually playing a key role in that ecosystem, and their carbon waste is turning into fuel for that ecosystem. So, 
I asked the question, and a colleague of mine, Dr. John Reed uh, from MIT, asked, can we harness the power of these microbes that are actually supercharged carbon recyclers? They're able to recycle carbon really quickly and leverage that to solve our carbon waste issue. And we started a company called Converti to focus on doing just that. And it turns out when you combine that with technology, where you create these specialized environments, controlled environments that mimic where you find these microbes on the planet, then you can actually cultivate them and harness their power of recycling carbon very quickly. And if you're going to use nature's chemical refineries to recycle carbon, what would you possibly make? Well, we call what we do carbon engineering, and we make oil. And that's important because oil is a fundamental building block of, of many of the products that we use and consume, from nylons to polyesters to plastics and other things. And we can go even further, and we can customize the oils that we make with this carbon engineering platform in order to be able to deploy local micro-refineries that are able to handle local waste mitigation needs and make customized oils for different products. So this leads to a low-cost type of technology that for me, it was really important on the business side because you need something to be cost-effective in order for it to actually be adopted in society. So when I started this journey, I was asking myself, what are the potential negative impacts of my carbon footprint on this planet? But happily, now I'm asking myself, what are the potential positive impacts of this type of technology that we are working on to commercialize that could be a solution to this? A type of technology that is sustainable, not only economically, and in, but also environmentally. It, you're taking low-cost carbon waste and you're turning it into a high-value chemical, a high-value oil. A type of technology that can be deployed in a distributed fashion to address local waste mitigation needs and local oil production needs. And a technology that is global, ultimately, because you can deploy this wherever there's carbon waste, methane waste, or even trash that you can partially combust. So it turns out that nature had a solution for us. In nature, recycling carbon is quite natural, and there's these supercharged microbes that are able to recycle carbon in a matter of hours. And in the process of trying to find a solution to one problem, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, we actually found a solution to another problem, reducing our reliance on fossil petroleum in a way that does not require us to tear down rainforests to use plant-based oils in a way that creates oils that are sustainable and carbon neutral. And there are other people that have approaches to solving this, and we welcome that. And there are other problems that we have in society, whether it's education or healthcare. And I ask you, dare to think about these problems. Dare to ask, how can we fix these problems? What needs fixing? And dare to ask and think about solutions. And then once you've done that, I dare you to go out and try to implement some of those solutions and make a positive impact. Thank you.